Thank you for joining us. And um, Dolly Ohayere is our very first guest on today's show. She's a certified marriage counselor, relationship coaching specialist. She's a lawyer. She's a human resource consultant and an entrepreneur. Now, Dolly, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Helena. <laughs> Lena and John. And happy Valentine's <laughs> in advance. Hmm. Thank you. It's because Thank you. Valentine's in view. That's why we're talking love all the way. So tell mm -hmm. us, tell us, what do you understand by the word I love you? Hmm. Okay. First of all, um, I'm happy you and John discussed this earlier because the truth is, um, love means different things to different people. Mm. And I know you asked the question initially, is love a now or a verb? You, you answered it a bit, but I'll just, if you don't mind, love can actually be a now or a verb, but it would depend on the context in which it is used. So a now, we all know a now is a naming word. So now is used to represent a person, place, or thing. So when you say things like um, human beings, um, need love, or my love for football knows no bounds, or um, a mother's love cannot easily be broken. A now, uh, sorry, um, love becomes a now because it represents a person, place, or thing. On the other hand, a now is a verb, um, sorry, love becomes a verb when it's in the action. So because it's in the doing, is an action word is a state of being word. So when you say things like, I love you, I love my spouse, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love becomes a verb in this context because it is in the doing, it's active. Okay. Hmm. Now, <laughs> well, I, I'm sure that uh, we're still going to need a little more clarification exactly. on a few things. Yes. But, I, but because, you know, I'm sure you agree with us that uh, I love you is a phrase that uh, we come across everywhere, every day, in different situations, mm -hmm. you know. Now, can I, can I say I love you to anyone? including a stranger on the streets. Yeah. Okay. So to be honest, in today's world, I love you, like I said, means different things to different people. It's one word that has been abused and misused. Hmm. Half of the time, people mistake obsession and infatuation with love. I mean, I dated, um, um, I dated someone in the past who used to abuse me and at the end of the day, he tells me, you know, I did that because, I love uh, you. yes, I did that because I loved you. Mm. Does that even make sense? I mean, how can you say you love me and you inflict pain on me? Love does not hurt others. Mm. Romans 13, 10. It's very clearly written there, you know. So, like you said, people use I love you all the time, you know. They don't know, you know, what if some of them don't know what it really means. And don't forget I love you, we have love, we have filial love, we have eros love, we have agape love, we have different kinds of love. So it just depends on where the person is coming from, all right? And, 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 and sometimes this is the reason why when you mention love to some people, it offends and assaults their senses. Hmm. The word has been defined and characterized in so many ways, TV programs, um, films, social media, um, articles, they have different stories to tell about what love means. It's also funny because with all these things, whenever you announce, you can ask any marriage counselor or coach, whenever you announce that you want to speak about love, no matter how heartbroken, how sad, how tired and disinterested the audience is, they suddenly come alive. Why? This is because each of us seek love. Whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, whether you're Christian or non-Christian, love is bound to, you know, come wherever human beings are. That's okay. what it is. All right, Dolly. So at this point, you know, mm. we've been back and forth talking about love. Is it a now? Is it a verb? You know, and mm. we've also said it should be expressed. It should be something that we can feel. 
Someone who batters you, who abuses you, cannot claim to love you. So, what does this famous word, these three words mean? When you say, I love you, what are you saying? Hmm. Okay, so I'll try and address that um, with three different kinds of love. And if you had asked me this question two years ago, maybe I wouldn't have been able to answer it. Okay. But I've done, like I've gone through a marriage theology course, um, which was uh, facilitated by my, my mentor, um, Sufiswebi, of Belize Africa. So I'll just try and uh, illustrate it with the errors, the fear, and the agape. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can. We can hear you. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Oh. All right. So, so a human being is made up of the body, the soul, and the spirit. So the body loves, the soul loves, and the spirit loves. Eros is, of course, the romantic love. The so, um, um, Thelia is, you know, loving with the soul. And agape is unconditional love. So the love of God, the love that God has for us. When a person loves the body, by this I mean with the five senses, mm. the person is said to love you know, with, you know, um, um, with, um, with the person so sensual, okay? So everything the body loves, like seeing, touching, smelling, hearing, and tasting. So things like food, sex, music, or whatever it is, really, that, you know, your, your, um, that works with your senses is Eros love. This explains why, um, I'll go back to the question John asked, can you just tell anyone I love you? This explains why a man can go to a nightclub and see a woman and tell the person he loves her just because he wants to have sex with her. Hmm. So for the man, he's expressed, he's saying, I love you, but it's the Eros love he's talking about. Okay. So people love in that sense, all right? So when a man loves a woman because of beauty or, you know, he's sexually attracted to her, it is the body that is loving her body. Mm -hmm. So the body craves things, and in most cases, once he gets what he wants, he becomes weary. Okay. This is where a lot of women get disappointed because mm -hmm. they sleep with the man in the hope that, you know, a permanent relationship will come out of it, and that never happens. Or vice All right? versa. So when oh. a man loves a woman... <laughs> or oh, vice yes, versa. <laughs> Of course, John. John, uh, sorry, I'm using I'm using man and him because you know it's a general term, even in the Bible. I'm you know, I'm, I'm simply TV, protecting man, I'm man, simply man. protecting the male gender. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So when a man so when a man loves a woman with his senses, he has turned the woman into an object. So let me say a bottle of Coca Cola. But if we want to even make it more expensive, we can use Mercedes Benz. But why would you want to be oh a Benz, God. no matter how expensive it is, when you can be something more? Mm. We were made in the image and likeness of God and should not be treated any less than that. Okay. So any man who tells you, I know some single people, a man will say, if you don't have sex with me, oh, that means you don't love me. That means that person doesn't even know what love is. So the person is still loving with errors. Hmm. All right? Hmm. And for us, you can enter marriage, you cannot enter marriage with Eros, which is the romantic love, because it is not the it's not capable of seeing you through till death do us part. No way. Loving till death do us part doesn't work with Eros love. I see. A good marriage may start with Eros love, but it must pick up another kind of love, which is the filia, which is the friendship love. By the way, in some relationships, they start with filia as well, which is the friendship love. Like my husband and I, we actually started with filial love, which is the friends, friendship love. Hmm. Then he went into errors, and of course he went into the, the um, agape love. Hmm. So filia is the way the soul loves, okay? It is interested in doing something for the other person. So the friendship thing, oh, give me and I give, so give or take. You have the desire to do good to the other person, but when a man loves a woman because of what he does for her, the chances that the day he cannot provide those things, mm. she's going to withdraw mm. and she's going to become critical and demanding. Wow. Yeah. All right? Yes. So, for example, if you're loving because you're getting money from someone, 
what happens when the money is not there? Hmm. I don't even need to answer that question. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to disconnect. Yeah. There won't be any intimacy anymore between you two. So filial love exists where um, there is reciprocal exchange of good action. So if that doesn't happen, filial love dies. However, the advantage of filial love is that it is more enduring because, um, you know, it's, uh, it has um, to do with a lot of sacrifices. You know, although that sacrifice demands a commensurate response from the other person. Mm. Okay. No. All right? Because so as we go along. and filial yes. are very key. Sorry? No, sorry. Be because, you see, um, there's a lot unfolding as you speak. Yeah. Right, and uh, I think we'll, we will come. We will we'll come, talk about the other yeah, kinds. We will come yeah. back to the other kinds of, of love, right? But because I, I really want to get something clear. It appears that, um, well, from my understanding, it appears that the application of love, hmm. right, is circumstantial. Okay. Yeah. How you apply it, the circumstances under which you apply it. And as a matter of fact, from what you're saying so far, it could even come in stages. Yeah. It could grow from one level mm. to the other. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is that it's putting us in so much trouble. Why is it so important for us to say, I love you? Why don't we just... Or to love. Yeah, or to love. Why don't we just go straight into what we want to do? Why is it so important? Why is love so important? Okay. So to answer that question, why love is important is, you know, from the filial love, you have to get to the agape love. And that's where, when you ask me that question, why love is important, love is important. Well, that kind of love, agape love, like I said, are different types. So it just depends on where the individual is coming from. And like John just rightly said now, he said, uh, why don't we just go straight into the thing instead of why do we have to say I love you? The truth is, when you profess your love to someone, it's different when you do it physically, you know, it's different verbally, so it just depends. You know, um, Helen said something earlier when we started. She said, uh, for men, because men are wired differently, men might not say, I love you all the time. Yes. But their actions might show you that. And John, you, you, you actually answered it. So the things you do can prove to your wife that you love her. But for some other people, particularly women, we like to hear those things. These are things we okay. love to hear. We love to you hear know. it from okay. you. We love to know that you love. <laughs> it is important for us to know that. Okay? And going to the why love is important. God is love. God died for us. God died because he loves us. Okay? So that takes me to agape love. All right? Mm -hmm. Once you have agape love is actually developed in marriage. So when we get to the altar, what we're getting to the altar with eros and philia, which is friendship and romantic love. But at the point you get to the altar, like for Catholics, the priest says something like, you have come to this church that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love. What does that tell you? It means that at the time you're even coming to the altar, your love hadn't been strengthened. Mm. Okay. All right? It means it was, it, yes, it means it was still leak-proof at the time. But by the time God blesses your love and pledges his divine support for that union, then, then his grace will lead you, yes, will definitely transform that mm. initial love to agape love. Okay. So it's when we get to agape love that we start talking about unconditional love, you know, what God did and things like that. And like Galatians 5.22 says, the spirit produces love. So that's why you have to get to that agape for you to be able to understand what love is. So when you say, I love you to someone, mm. it will mean something. You know, okay. It will make a difference because, yeah. you know, you're not just loving, you're making sacrifices. First okay. Corinthians 13 says, um, um, 13, 4 to 8, of course, love is kind, love is patient. I don't even need to go through all mm. that. But yes. the truth yeah. is, is, when you get to agape, when you have agape, and Agape love is developed in marriage through the challenges we experience. So it's not just something you carry mm. from your relationship. It's not possible. Okay. So it develops inside that marriage. All right, then. Um, a lot of it is more on the agape, you know, for human beings. When you look at all the beautiful features 
of the agape love is kind, is, is not puffed up. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, 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 it perseveres. It does not see any wrong and all of that. Now, we're talking Christianity. Love is, um, is everything to every human being born of man and woman, whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, if I'm right. So is, it found, it, is love's foundation based on religion? And can you talk about love without talking about God? So you're situating love more in a family between husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. How about love, you know, amongst other members of the family and the society? Which of this definition of love, really, do we expect to see and experience? Okay. So for love, like loving your family, loving your friends, that's why there's friendship love, all right, which is the filial love. Okay. And... Um, Let's, like you said, let's not go into agape because agape is basically for those that are already married, all right? So if we're talking about love for, you know, others, filial love is friendship love. So that's where you build, you know, relationships. And don't forget, we're supposed to love everyone around us. So it's not like it's, um, it's our responsibility to do that. So you can't see someone... And that's why, let me give you an example, you know, you know when you live with your domestic staff, for example, and why I'm bringing this up is because um, on social media, we've seen a lot of videos, a lot of um, experiences of people where you're living with domestic staff and you treat them like they're slaves. I mean, they're working for you, but you must show them that love. You know, you must be able to let them you know, feel loved as well, you know. So that's why your security men, you know, people around you, not mm. just people you think, oh, maybe this this man or woman is one big person. Let me respect her. Let me respect him. Let me love the person. No. Love should be something that you give to everyone around you. So it is important you actually, um, um, you actually brought that up, um, Helen, because we ignore that a lot of times in our relationships with human beings, in our relationship with um, people around us as well. Yeah, so that's basically what it is. So, so as essentially you're saying that um, um, because people come from different backgrounds culturally, they've had different experiences, they are even of different genders, of course, mm. that uh, love will, could, love could mean different things to different people you know, yeah. at different times. Depending on the relationship. On, that's, yeah. is, that, is that what you're saying? Depending on the relationship. Yes, yes depending on the relationship. Okay. Yes. Okay. That, 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 that's quite interesting. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, well. uh, because the truth is, yes, because the truth is, like you said, we all come from different... But, okay, so let me give you an example. If you meet someone who didn't grow up in love, that person has no love to offer you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because if, okay. if you didn't grow up in love, if you don't know, if you don't even have love for yourself as an individual, then you have nothing to give. Mm. You know, so if that's why I feel, it, I think it means different things to different, so it just depends on the context in which it is used. Mm. Okay, that's another angle. You know, you must, <laughs> you must have it to be able to give it. If you don't have, you can't give it. But isn't and, it and, and if you understand what it is, it is only then you know, that you would probably be able to appreciate when other people complain that you're not showing them love. But isn't it in it to a large extent? Aren't we born to love? Huh. Don't we have love in us, you know, from the creator? Well, <laughs> yes. so much so question. I, I, I like that, John. The thing is that by the time you're born, don't forget, you're a baby, you're growing up. You're growing up in different culture, different tradition, different background, and things like that. So you grow up having, building your own personality as a human being. So, and our personalities are different, you know, so it just depends. So that's why it's not something, it's supposed to be something we're born with. But you know, as you grow up, you can deviate, you know, because, you know, you become an adult, um, 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 you become a teenager, you grow up, so you build your own characters. You okay. build, you know, what... All right, Dolly, time is almost 
out, you know. I wish That's could. why they oh. say that love <laughs> rules the world. I wish we could and continue And there's so with many this. kinds of love. And um, mm -hmm. we wish that we had more time, yes. you know, to go through all of that. But unfortunately, we do not. But love, like John says, is universal and we're born with it. We desire love on a daily basis. And so love from different perspectives will be something we'll be talking about on this program, The Family Show, every week. So we, we believe that we will see you again, not um, too long, to help us um, talk more about love. All right? Thank you so much, Thank you Jordan. so much. Thank you for having me, Jordan and Helene. Thank you. Thank you. And happy Valentine's Day. Happy, happy Valentine's. Valentine's Day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was Dolly explaining the meaning of love, the different dimensions of love. We hope you were able to pick so much from her conversation. Um, basically, love is a feeling. You need to share it. You need to give it. You need to have it to give it. We will take a quick break right now. But don't worry. We'll be back before you know it. Please don't go away. <laughs>